Good evening, happy Wednesday. How is it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another Project Healing Water special. We tie flies in support of the St. Cloud program of Project Healing Waters Fly Fishing, connecting veterans in the wonderful world of fly fishing, healing those who have served. How's it going, everybody? Welcome. We'll give everybody some time to join in. Say hiya, hello, how are you in the chat? Looks like I've got a little bit of a delay uh, between my voice and my audio. Um, I've kind of just learned to deal with it um, as best as I can. I really don't watch my own videos too much, but I am glad that you do. So thank you for tuning in, whether you're tuning in live or after the fact uh, later on. Um, so today is June the 16th, June 16th, pert near halfway through June. Maybe, yeah, one day past halfway June. Uh-oh, says we have zero viewers all of a sudden. I wonder what happened. The internet has been kind of interesting today. So um, now it says we have no data. I hope this isn't going to be one of those nights. Oh, we got James in the house. Good evening, James. Now it's saying no data, but it's saying that I'm doing a live stream. Um, life's all right. We got the smart mouth. We got the James. Good evening. Well, we got people coming in on chat. Oh, now it says I've got an excellent condition. Uh, so there might be some major buffering happening tonight so we'll deal with it the best we can um be sure to smash that like button as they say it's right there or is it over there there wait one of those places be sure to subscribe um we're going to be tying up some just some basic bucktail streamers um i was actually inspired i was flipping through this uh fly tying with uh synthetics patterns and techniques over 175 patterns and fly tying techniques using larva lace and other synthetics so uh, this isn't, um, you know, a pattern for pattern uh, replica because we're going to be using some synthetics and some of the bucktail. Mr. Hoisington, thank you for tuning in. Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, if the little ones watch and we'll say, hello, Safine, how are you? We'll do a special shout out just for my little guy out there. What's up, Safine? and mama bear perry good evening what's going on guys so we're gonna be tying up like i said uh it's kind of a basic bucktail um i don't think there's any kind of fancy wizardry behind this but um, i went through a couple iterations of coming up with this one earlier today sat down cranked a couple of these outs and i think we are ready to put it in front of the camera sometimes mostly so Mondays Monday mornings on our Monday morning live streams we uh, just kind of go with what whatever sends it um, happens happens and um, here on our Wednesday nights we do it for two hours and or thereabout ish uh, sometimes my back can give out it's kind of tough leaning up over this hot mess look at this you guys don't even know half of the struggle that mess and that mess we won't get into there but um, you know a clean desk is like a clean mind or an open mind or a cluttered desk I don't know Einstein said something about something and I'm going with that hot mess and I don't know let's uh, quit the pitter patter and tie some flies what do you guys say sounds good Aaron all right, we'll flip that camera over. We'll do the hokey pokey, spin my chair around. Kick on the light. And, oops, I knocked the 
cap off of my peacock curl. You know what? I'm going to leave that peacock curl out. We just might use it. In fact, I think we will. Oops. All right, there go the beads. But they're all individually bagged and tagged and sorted out. All right, first things first, you always got to get comfortable. You should always be in a comfortable seated position when you tie your flies. Have your vise right in front of you. Don't be like me and throw a camera or a cell phone mounted in between here and there. It's interesting because where my camera is located is where your average person with a C-clamp vise would clamp onto. But that's all right. Uh, if you want the view of that, I do have a behind the scenes kind of a fast forward video of what that all entails. Anywho, so I got a big old, big old hook, size two. This is a moonlit. What I'm looking at here is the str extra length. So we got a three X long. They call it a one X strong, but um, yeah, these are nice barbless hooks. Um, and, and I'm just gonna, like usual, just gonna go as we go. Um, one of the things that I want to do, and what I like to do, is add a little red tag end around the butt. So I'm gonna start off with some red thread. And we're gonna start off back here. And this will just be step one. And like all flies that, that you guys watch me tie, um, you know, it's never the only way. This is not the one and only way to tie this. This is how I am tying this. And even then, I might tie it slightly different some other time. Um, but this is what we're coming up with tonight. A basic bucktail streamer. And I think... When we're done, I don't know, this might be going a little bit beyond basic, so we'll just run our thread all the way up front now. I just wanted to throw a little bit of red thread back there. We'll finish. There we go. So I left myself a little bit of room up front with my thread. I like to give myself kind of a visual um, at this point as to where I want my head to be for my fly. And this fly we want a little bit bigger of a head because we're going to put some eyes in it. Uh, James is in Kentucky. Hey y'all, how's Kentucky? Uh, went to the Wolf Creek Fish Hatchery today. Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, if you ever get a chance to, ladies and gentlemen, be like James. Check out hatcheries. Um, and if you're ever in Kentucky, check out the uh, Wolf Wolf Creek Hatchery. All right, so we just got a little red thread on the back end. Uh, we'll deal with that just a little bit more later. Um, we wanted our main tying thread. We're going to switch to a 210 flat waxed. Let's go ahead and start our thread. All right, now here's a little trick. One of the things that I've found um, with some of these flies is getting them down into the current can be a little difficult. So I'm going to add a little splash of hidden lead free wire. I'm going to hide this inside. Um, some lead free, some diet wire. Not quite as heavy as leaded wire, but um, I'm just going to sneak one little strip of this in here. And, you know, are we adding a lot of weight? No. Are we adding weight? Yes. So I'm just going to tie this in on the bottom side. This will kind of help keep this fly kind of keel properly. We'll be riding hook side down, that's our intention. So we'll take it almost to the tip of the hook and weasel that off. All right. 
I want to add a little bit of uh, inner body and I want to go ahead and this is the same as a uh, flashaboo. This is a silver, silver flash. And let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, about a half a dozen or so strands of flash. And I'm going to go full length and tie these in right on the back end. And we'll just work our thread all the way forward. Set that off to the side. All right, now that little bugger ran off on me. There it is. Um, what I have here is some uh, stretch tubing, and this is a, an olive stretch tube. Um, it's not a lot larva lace uh, like the book was describing, but and they had, the book didn't add a little red tail. But we're going to add some stretch tubing on this, a little stretch tube body. So we'll tie it in up front. Once you got a good bite on it, really give it a stretch. We want this to lay down nice and flat. Good thing we got this nice flat wax thread to help us work our way all the way from front to rear. And I want to take this about even, just a little bit into past the gap, or not the gap, but the uh, hook point. Take that thread and we'll just park it up front. Take note, I'm leaving room up front. I'm not crowding the eye. So let's go ahead and do our inner body, which is this uh, silver flashaboo-like material. And we could just do a forward wrap. And you know what, this first wrap, I'm going to go behind my stretch tube. I'll do one full wrap behind there. And then it's just taking slightly overlapping wraps all the way forward. This will give us a nice little silver inner body here. The first ones I tested, I used a, a green flash boo, Kelly Green. But then I found my silver. And I thought, all is well. Let's let's go ahead and do this. All right. I'll lock this flash boo off up front. Left us this nice little silver inner body. And we're going to see how this olive looks over the silver. I've got a feeling this is going to be smashingly fantastic. All right. Give it a nice tug to get it started. You want to find the right balance of stretch that you like. Um, you can stretch it super tight, super thin, super flat, or you can give it just a little bit of slip and it kind of bubbles out a little bit. But we'll just make sure we take nice, even touching wraps. And almost as I get a little bit further forward, I I let it relax just a little bit. Just to kind of let it get a little bit more bulk, a little more body, if you will. All right, you know what? I don't want to go much further than that. So on that wonderful note, we'll lock that off.
Beautiful. Save that. Rest of that. Stretch tube for later. Okay. All right. So I'm going to add just a little dab of uh, bone dry, some Solares bone dry on the back end there. Um, looking for the botkin. There's one. And I'm going to go just a little drop on the bodkin. It can get a little easy to get carried away. Just there on that back end, work it into the stretch tube, and that'll protect it on the back end. I suppose you could cover the whole thing. You know what? Let's give that a try. I haven't done that yet. Let's just go ahead and add just a little bit, just a little dab of resin over the whole thing. I'm not trying to soak it, but, you know, I think just working a little bit in there might make it a little bit more tough. So I'll just give it a, a moment under the light. I don't know if I had time to watch the Gasto 11 vid I mentioned last time. No, I did not. That's fantastic. Science is cool. All right. So now we got to build our wing. We're going to build our head all at the same time. First things first, I'm going to do an underwing of some crystal flash pearl. Let's see, one, two, three, four strands. Multiply by dividing, four will become eight. But they'll be half as big. Lift and lower it right on top. Bada boom, bada bing. I'll take a couple of turns. Fold that back. Give it a little pinch. And you know what? I think that's a pretty good length. All right. It's not a basic bucktail streamer if it doesn't have your basic bucktail. I should zoom up a little bit. There we go. Come on, camera one. Get with it. So we're going to take a little bit of bucktail. This bad boy's been chomped and stomped. So still liking the kind of midway up closer towards the tip. <clears throat> you won't get too much flare. But we do got a good amount of length. And what's the first thing we do to our bucktail after we trim it off? That's right, you clean it. Hold it by the tips, exposing the cut end. And we can just go ahead and strip off any fuzz or smaller bits. We're going to comb through it if you want, but one of the things that really works best is give it just a little bit of a twist. Roll it in your fingertips. That really helps clear that out. So, if we were to just tie this on as is, it would be a little scraggly. So we're going to run this through the old hair stacker, what do you guys say? Tips down, into the hair stacker we go. Give it the old cyclone action. And there she is. I'm going to hit mute so you don't blow out your eardrums. Sometimes I forget how loud that can be on, on camera. All right. Let me 
rid of any remaining scraggler stragglers. So I'm looking at for my size is to be just a little bit a little bit past that flash. So we're at a hook's length, and then maybe just a little bit more. Not quite. You know, we're not going. We're not using the whole bucktail going super long. Although that would probably look nice, but I like like this length. And I'm going to go ahead trim this off at an angle. I don't know why I let go of it. Make sure my thread is nice and flat. We'll get a bite on it. There you go. Get that started. And if you don't go at an angle, you'll end up with too much of a, a ridge. Or a cliff, like I did. So hopefully we can just build this up, clean this up a little bit, without adding too much bulk too quick. All right. We're getting there. So we got our flash underneath, and we got our bucktail up top. Let's add. You know, I mentioned I found that peacock curl. This is right off of an eye. Let's see here. I'm just gonna go with that last little bit. Is that four or five strands? We're gonna just kind of match this in there, maybe just a little bit longer than everything else. Kind of keep that natural curve to it. I'm digging that. That one worked out pretty good. I'm kind of glad the peacock curl exposed itself to me got it onto my radar. Alright, so before I call it quits up top, I'm going to lift this all up. My thread bopped. I'm going to do a thread wrap or two underneath, pulling forward a little bit. And this will help a little bit keeping this, uh, this wing kind of propped up. All right, before I go too far, we're looking good on that. And um, if you have your rotary vise, you'll rotary it right underneath, just like that. The rest of us will use our fingers. Time for some red. I want to do a little red throat underneath. Some crystal flash. Let's go one. I'll pick out another one. We'll go two strands. Which three would be just way too many. When one is enough, and three is just way too many. Behold, uh, number two. All right, we're going to do some serious multiplication by division. Got four. We have it right in the middle. I think this is going to do good. We got eight pieces. We're going to do one last fold over. We're going to do it right on the bit. Couple of turns, lock it in. And if you got the nice flat floss thread, you can really kind of make sure you get a nice even head up up top. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna cut this down.
halfway the distance. I like to go halfway between All right, let's go ahead and finish this with a whip finish. All right, there we have it. I guess I called this the wrong thing. I called this a basic bucktail streamer, but this is just a little bit above and for a basic now because we're going to use the flat part of our scissors and we're going to squish that head down a little bit giving us a nice flat surface on the sides because you know what's next after that some eyes and this is going to get enough goop and resin around the head we can just use the sticky on there and that's going to be enough because we're going to encapsulate the whole Shazam here in a moment. Uh-oh, we dropped one. And if we were old school, these would be painted on. Oh no, I don't think that's going to have enough sticky left to it. We might have to add a little dab of glue Let's do that. Let's see if I can't get a little bit of zappa gap on my finger. That's not good. All right, not the prettiest of solutions on there. I'm kind of googly eyed. but it should hold. All right, let's grab some resin. We'll start with some uh, thin. And we're gonna do just a little drop right on top in between the eyes. It's going to fill the gap. It doesn't take much, just a little dab right on the head. That'll soak in, not soak in, but that'll distribute itself amongst in between the eyeballs. We'll flip it over and we'll repeat operation on the bottom. This is just make sure we get around the eyes. That's what we're after. Because then we're going to add another quick quick dose of uh, bone dry to encapsulate the whole the whole thing. So these give these quick little zap here here and there to give it the quick set. And then we're going to finish it off here with a solid. Here we go. That bone dry really runs quick so we want to make sure we get it all the way around. Don't be afraid to work it. Don't be afraid to twerk it. Shake your money maker as they say. So I think we could have went a little bit better on our shape of our head but I think at this point I'm satisfied. And then once you got it where you want it, you set it and forget it. 
you know what? I think these eyes, they might even, yeah, these are, uh, check this out. Ooh, little glow in the dark eyes. Four millimeter, that's the size of the eyes. We call them fish eyes. F I S C H. So that's that's what we're going to call the basic a basic bucktail streamer. A um, little above and beyond, but I don't know. Questions, comments, concerns. What do you guys know? What do you guys say? How are you doing out there? What's going on? We got five in the house. Outstanding. Well, I think that's going to catch a fish. I think that's going to catch a fish. Faux show. Sure. We're going to definitely throw that for uh, for some bass. Well, I say we try. Oh, I wanted to show you this. This was uh, with a different different flash. Try this just slightly different. Uh, this is the same olive stretch tube, but instead of silver, I did a bright green. That gave us kind of a greener greener body and that was before I remembered I could throw some crystal flash underneath but we did that same flash that we used on top and this was the first first go around so this was the first one and then we evolved we got ourselves to here Gotta like that silver underneath. Maybe we'll try a silver with the, uh, oh, what do you call it? Maybe I'll do a clear stretch tube next. Joe Duca. Good evening, Joe. Thanks for tuning in. All right, well, let's reset and do it again. I think I'm going to want a few of these in the box. Start off with our hooks. We are using a size 2, 3x long streamer hook. These are moonlit. It's got a picture of a trout, but we'll catch a bass with it. Don't tell them. 3x long. All right, we liked that red. I like the red tag end on the back. So we're going to do that again. We'll need our red thread for that. Oh, we'll start right about there. And I guess if you have, you know, any other thread or floss or wire, um, you know, let your imagination be your only limitation. Um, we can make it as simple or as complicated as you want it. It's up to you. Think of the money you'll save, they say. Which is true. I really do. My, the amount of money I've spent on like store-bought flies is virtually zero. Um, it's absolutely a negligible number. Um, I do have have picked up a couple here and there to uh, analyze, take home, replicate. Um, 
but you know if, if there's a shop owner and you're a supporter of your local fly shops hey man buy a fly or two it may not be exactly what you need but it definitely helps them out and usually the fly you know they say what's what well, and I can't I'm not, I'm not trying to say this has ever happened to me but you know this is a you know as they say you know old-timer stories little words of wisdom you know you always ask them what fly should I buy what's what's biting out there well you're gonna get sold the flies that they have the most of the highest inventory product so they say uh, the tubing I am using here we go there's the package this is olive stretch tube and this is a standard olive um, but this time we're gonna see about going to uh, a clear so let me bundle this up here real quick yam it back into its appropriate storage vessel I have a tendency of leaving things out of the bag and getting things that aren't labeled or you know uh, it came in a box of from an estate sale or something and it never even had a label well, what do you do you do the best you can and make the best of it let's find our stretch tube that's that might not be enough here we go here is a small clear. This was from Hawkeye Fly Tire. Hmm. Not sure where that is. That probably came from a, a goodie box. But we're going to do the same, same situation, same scenario. We're going to lay this stretch tubing over the body. It's going to give us a cool little, cool little body, I suppose. All right, we are gonna do the same trick with our uh, our diet wire. 0 0.025 diet wire. Actually, I wonder if I have anything just a little bit bigger. And the lead-free variety. Nope. Just some heavy big guns. Full-flavored lead wire. We'll get that at the ready. And I'm not going to wrap it around. I don't want to add too much, too much weight. Um, I don't want this to dredge, dredge the bottom. But I am looking for my thread. There we go. We're going to switch our thread to a black 210 denier flat wax thread. Start this right about here. And we're going to sneak our lead free wire underneath on the bottom side. Why? I don't know. Seems like an appropriate place to put it because I want, want it to ride hooks, hook side down. That's okay. Park that on the bottom. And not quite to the bend of the hook. So, you know, it's like ultimately we're just adding maybe one, two, three, four wraps of thread or, or of wire or so. There we go. Actually, what we could do is we could almost add another little strip. Let's try that. We'll do that right about there. Work our way forward with that. All the way on the bottom.
I don't know. It's definitely something. Kind of rolled around. Yeah, it's rolled up to the side. Kind of smush it around. Yeah, that'll work. All right, let's add our floss, or not our floss, but our flash. We're going to do silver silver flash on a with a clear tube. I need to stick that tube somewhere because it's clear and it's easy to lose. Could you believe that? Things that are clear can be easy to lose. All right, let's start with, I don't know, half a dozen, eight or so strands of silver flashaboo. Right about at that hook point. Maybe just a little bit further back, thereabouts. I like that red tag end back there. All right, we'll run our thread forward because we're going to stretch this tube for from front to back. Um, if you just tie this in at the back end, you're going to end up with a little bump. No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, clamp it down nice and tight up front. Then we'll give it a stretch to the rear. And I like running it. This is going to run up the side. Instead of directly on top. I'll take that all the way back. I like that. Nice tight thread wraps. That's going to have a little bump. But we're looking for even. wrap this forward. We'll start with our flash. Nice and tight. I'm going to do one wrap behind one wrap. First full wrap will be behind the uh, stretch tube. And the rest of these will work their way forward. Keep a good amount of tension on that. Let it just kind of, you can kind of hear it sliding and slipping through my fingers, but we're just looking for a nice even coverage. And it's nice having those full length pieces of flash boot to work with. I like that. I think that one turned out all right so far. Now we'll wrap our stretch tube forward. This is one of those things that, boy, can't even. This is just like adding a, a weird layer of resin on top. But I like it. Touching ramps, nice and even. Rear to the front. All right, give it a nice little sharp tug there at the end. And you really want to make sure you got a good bite on it. Because um, if you don't, after you give it a snip, it'll run its way all the way through. Boy, that turned out just pretty. All right, we'll add a little dab of resin on the back end. Give us a little protection, a little insurance policy.
It'd be a good application for some of the secret sauce. But while we're at it tonight, we're just going to use some bone dry. Set it and forget it. Well, I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I got out with the uh, poppers that we tied last week, and I most definitely enticed some fish with it. It was actually quite, quite the adventure. Oh yeah, we're gonna do just a slight. Slight coat over that. Maybe one little drop spread around. Boy, that sure makes it shiny. Tell you that for free. And don't forget got another side. Got to let it all cook. Alright, that works. Alright, who's ready for a wing? Me, me, me. All right, let's see. Crystal Flash, Pearl. We'll do our underwing. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, that'll work. Off. Pull it over once. Trim the loop. And on the other end, I'm not going to give it a clean, clean cut. We just got one, one little straggler. All right. We'll do our little lift and lower. And set it right on top. Doesn't get much easier than that. A few thread wraps, fold it back, and we got ourselves a little underwing. Doo doo doo. All right. We need a regular wing, or non-underwing, or outer wing, our main wing, and for that, as promised, bucktail. Just throw some white, some good old classic white bucktail, North American white bucktail. Did you know not all bucktail comes from bucks? I mean, the good ones do, but not all bucktail come from the male. Equal opportunity for usage, I suppose. Get rid of the shorties, clean that out nice and clean. And let's go ahead and let's do the hair stacker. Tips down, come in like a cyclone, like that. I'm going to hit my mute. All right. Let's measure this out. You 
No, we gotta. I'm gonna put that back into my stacker. I want to trim that this flash boo or crystal flash back just a little bit. It was just a uh, just a little bit too long. That'll do us. Get a bite on it. There goes the whip finish. There we go. What do you think? I think I liked it with that uh, peacock roll up there. Or we could do some of this black ostrich. Let's do that. Let's grab some of this kind of black ostrich a little bit closer up to the top. Like that nice little strip on top. Fantastic. All right, let's flip this. Oh, we wanted to rooster up our wing a little bit. Do that by taking a few wraps behind and pull forward. Carefully get underneath, pull forward a little bit. That just helps rooster that up just a little bit. All right, rotisserie that over, and we'll get our little red cutthroat. And we'll use some crystal flash for that. We'll go with two strands. What do you say? One, two. I'm going to try to cut. Oh, that's three. You know what? We got three. We'll send it with three, just a little bit more than last time. Won't be the end of the world. Carefully line that up, chomp them in half, fold it over again, chomp it in half. And that's going to be it. Cause we're going to tie this in. You know, can also, even though we're working underneath, I can still lift, lower, set, get down right on top, pull those back. I think we're good for a whip finish here. Nice big solid head. I like it up front. All right. Let's find our eyes and stick those on. 
I really liked the look of those. Oh, where did you go? I set them. Under the flash. Under the bucktail. Here's my package. This is what we're looking for. The four millimeter eyes out of their bag. Do they fall in my lap? That's always a good place to look. Check your lap. There they are. Underneath the pearl. Crystal flash. Oh, we wanted to flatten this down. Oh, first. Look at me, I'm way ahead and behind. All right, so we got this nice round head. We want to flatten a little bit, compress it. Use the flat part of those scissors. And that'll give us a little flat spot to stick our eyes in, or on. And these are four, four millimeter, oh, I don't want to do those ones yet. Kind of the classic way, gives it that classic look with the, I love the look of those eyes. And if we were being like old school and classic about it, we would definitely be painting, painting these on. Um, but instead, we're going to just stick them on and use some resin to encapsulate all the way around it. And that's, that's the key to keeping these eyes to uh, actually adhere, because the sticky back on them uh, just isn't quite enough. I got a red... Crystal flash in my beverage. Don't worry, we got it out. All right, we're gonna start with some UV Cure Solar Res Thin, and um, it's just not quite as thin as the bone dry. Um, but it definitely gets in and fills all the super fine gaps, which is what we're trying to go right behind the eyes, or on top of the head behind the eyes. Just a little drop will do ya. I'm gonna go right into that nose a little bit. And that's it. Just fill in the brow in between the eyes and let it seep right over top. Fill in up front, give it a quick little zap, rotisserie, get underneath, wash, rinse, repeat, do the same thing. we'll be able to fill in with the bone dry. And 
this, you just want to make sure you get this worked up up and over the eyes. So this seals in with the, the rest of the head. And you've got the eyes in the mix. Guess what, Buttercup? You are fishing for more than just compliments. I like it. Questions, comments? What do you think we should do for our next one? I think I just need to add just one more little dub. Here we go. I think we should just come in for a close-up on this one. Where's a... I need a cork. Cork to hold it. I'm supposed to have a whole drawer of cork somewhere. Down. Well, let's just use this little piece of foam here. So looking at it super close, I don't know. What do you think? I think it's pretty clean. What do you think? I like the little red back end. A nice little clean head. At least clean enough. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. If you think about the, the microsecond that a fish gets to make the decision, uh, as to whether or not it wants to hit that fly or not. Maybe two-tone bucktail like a Mickey Finn. Let's do... I also have some red that I wanted to do work with as well. This is... I guess they do call it, I guess stretch tube is lava lace. 
Is that the same thing? I guess so. I never really noticed. Some older stuff. Um, and I want to do one with a red body. With the silver, silver underneath. I think that'll work. <laughs> but if we have a red body, what do we do for a tag? Oh my gosh, I just realized something. Hold on, folks. I'll be right back. i got to put you on this quick standby. Be right back. All right, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I had to quick uh, throw in my two cents. Uh, had somebody, somebody's upstairs talking to my wife, and uh, I remembered uh, a little bit of information that I was supposed to relay. Uh, but um, yeah, all right. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do another one with a red body. I guess this is lava lace. So. Lava lace, I guess, is pretty much pretty much the same as a stretch tube, um, but there is stuff called like a D D rib, and uh, that actually comes out a little bit more chunky. I think this is a uh, yeah, this is a vinyl. So this is a vinyl rib, and it's solid, whereas stretch tube and lava lace is hollow if we can see that um, but we're going to do a red red body on this one and I don't see a hook out yet so get the hook out that's the last one of that pack Let's see. Obese to beast. Hey, good evening. Steve is in the house. All right, we got a full house tonight. Hey, guys, gals, thanks for tuning in. You know, it doesn't seem like much on the surface, but, um, you know, we're all here. And I appreciate that. Um,. I don't know. What do we think? Do we do a tag end? I think we got to do something. What do we do if we do red? If we do a red body, what do we put on the back? Um, white? Ooh, a little bit of gold or yellow. Let's do that. Here we go. So here's some 210, kind of a yellow nylon. This will look good back there. And we're not even going to use a bobbin. We're just going to do this by hand.
why we invest in bobbins. This is why the bobbin was invented. <laughs> so you didn't have to do something like this by hand. But we'll give ourselves a nice little yellow back end, a little red and yellow. Maybe we'll do a yellow wing. Good enough. Run that forward. I think that'll serve its purpose very well. Didn't want to quite go with chartreuse. Um, you know, even though if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. But we'll get good use out of that one. So yeah, we did go with the yellow. Doesn't come out on camera very well, but it is what it is, and it's not what it's not. All right, let's start our thread. Switch to a black 210. A little more meat and potatoes for a fly this size. Size 2, 3x long shank hook. That's what we're talking about. All right, so we're not going to go two bananas with our lead-free diet wire. Um, but we are going to make sure we get get a strip on underneath just to give us a little bit of, a little bit, just a little, just a little, 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 little bit of extra weight. A little hitchhiker's worth. I don't know. Run that to the rear, and we'll go right about to the tip of the hook. All right, we're going to stick with the same, same silver underbody. This is just a silver flashaboo. Um, let's see here. There's the whip finish. It's one of the best tricks that Mr. Dave Coleman taught me on getting, the, and you don't find this in the books. Using your whip finish tool, cut the corner of your bags, and then you can just hunt out with a little bit more precision as to how many pieces of flash you want out of your bag. And you can just give it a trim, and then bada boom, bada bing. This nice clean end. All right, we'll go right a bit there. And again, you can. It's up to you. You get to decide on how uh, simple or complicated you want to make something like this. Um, Imagination is truly your only limitation with fly tying and all things in life. Tell you what, when this little container thing empties out, when I'm done with the innards, I'm going to refill this with the uh, actual, with some other stretch tube or whatnot. Fly tying materials. So this is the real deal. Hmm. Nice tight wraps up front, and then we'll give it a nice stretch, pull straight back, and we're just going to run this up the side. Front to rear, nice even wraps, not quite touching, right to the tip of the hook. That's where we, that's where I like ending it. Give myself plenty of room back there. I don't necessarily want to crowd nothing. We'll take nice even thread wraps. Now if we tied this in back here, you'd have a bump and then you'd have some kind of awkward uh, area to fill in. So, all right. Let's 
let's go ahead and take our flashaboo, our silver flash. And again, we're going to do our first wrap behind our little lava lace or stretch tube. And then it's just a matter of nice, even touching wraps, overlap slightly overlapping the laps. And this should give us a little bit of sparkle or reflectivity underneath. Alright, let's lock that off. A few locking wraps. Let's wrap our tube forward. Give it a nice stretch there at the back end. Where this stuff is a little stiffer, a little older than the previous stuff we were using. But nonetheless, just make sure we take nice even touching wraps. Boy, that's bright. I like that. It's like the, the longer I look at it, it's like looking at the sun. It just gets brighter and brighter. Yeah, buddy. That's fantastic. All right, let's do a little dab of resin on the back end and then the body. And we're just going to use some bone dry because we like, I like, I don't want to smooth out those ridges. I like those ridges there. bit on that thread and a little bit into the body. We're gonna go single, single tone on this. I'm gonna just do a yellow, a yellow wing, yellow bucktail wing with the uh, ostrich on top. Cause I don't want to wanna, don't quite want to encroach on the Mickey fin. Although it could be a nice Mickey Finn hybrid. Nice nod. Have we tied Mickey Finns here yet? I'm sure we have. Alright, regulars, let me know. Have we tied uh, Mickey Finns or, or not? 
think. Well, I mean, in the, have we tied a? Have, that's like asking, have I tied a Mickey Finn on a Wednesday night during a live stream in the last year? Hmm. I mean, it's like a one in fifty-two chance. Let's go ahead and clear this out. Look at all that stuff. Give it a little pinch and twist. Roll it in your fingertips. We'll get rid of all those smalls. And we'll run this into the hair stacker. Tips down, just like that. All right, I'm gonna hit the mute. That should work. Oh, we wanted to do our underwing first. Ah, underwing, underwing. Let's put that back into the hair stacker as a little holder. All right, I feel like we have tied Mickey Finns. Think in the A to Z series, but not in the last year. I do have the red wool for the red tag end on it. Um, oh yeah, I was looking to look for uh, do I have a gold Let's use the pearl, I guess. We'll stick with our pearl underwing, pearl flashaboo underwing. Oh, let's go half a dozen or so. Four, four or five. Fold that over once. And then we'll put this on about halfway. Let's add our, add our wing. That'll show them. to be way up there. Here we go. You know, sometimes things just don't want to work. I think this is one of those times. Here we go. We're getting it. Here we go. Because it all slid, all our thread is just kind of loosely bunched. We do this. We just want to make sure we get nice, if nothing else, nice tight thread wraps. All right, we'll do that, and then we'll add some peacock curl. Where'd that eye go?
Now I'm taking this, you know, this is a regular batch of just regular straight peacock curl. This is the stuff you get in the bag. It's all sewn together. And this is off of, uh, I'm peeling these off of the side of an eye. Because I got that nice little groovy curve to it. I don't know, four, five, six or so. So it's not just any old peacock curl, it's peacock curl of the eye. All right. And I think we'll have to do, I think I got, I think this will work. This is a gold, gold crystal flash kind of substitute. All right, let's flip this over. Rotary vice it. All right, this is my gold. Kind of just got some loose, loose strands of it, so we'll we're gonna make the best of it. Make sure it stays centered. And if need be, every now and then flatten your thread. Get get nice wide footprint coverage. Now we gotta cut that while we're still underneath. I might have biffed it on that floss on the back, but I think I just grabbed it with the hook, the, the vise. Oh, I think I did a bad thing. Don't try this at home. I said it was a nylon thread. There. So when you do a little uh, thing of floss around the bend of the, into the hook, uh, don't don't go grabbing at it with the vise. All right, let's go ahead and do our eyes. So we'll flatten the head. You know, we didn't do our couple thread wraps to rooster that up. Uh oh. Why does it look like things are frozen? Uh oh. Looks like we are having a technical difficulty with our camera. Um, uh, let's see here. We'll switch to that. Yeah, that camera's still frozen. I might have to disconnect and reconnect. All right, so that.
technology, folks. I mean, this is this is where we're stuck at, right? I. But this is where we're at. We're gonna see if we can't get this server started up again. Alright, that should be good. And... Let's hit refresh on this. Close that out. That's working there. Gone. Just like that. The camera's gone. Oh well. <sighs> That's frustrating, ladies and gentlemen. It was just getting good. But we don't have a camera. I mean, we have a camera. But this is on the computer. I... Maybe I can Nope, just the lighting on it. it's just not quite good enough. Let's zoom this back out. Hmm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's live streaming at its best. Uh one man band. Uh I wish I had a better answer for you. I guess I could just uh, finish the live stream like this. See uh, questions, comments, concerns. Um, let me know in the chats. Um, <clears throat> man, I'm bummed. We we're we we're having such. We had a good run going. We've 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 haven't had too much difficulty. Uh, but, man, gosh, well, humbug, that's the live stream, um, I guess we're just going to wrap it up there, um, I'll hang out here for another few minutes, uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, criticisms uh, want to make a donation uh, who knows <laughs> I don't know uh, having a good week so far uh, the weather's been hanging in there took care of some shrubbery uh, no lawns to be mowed or anything like that because uh, it's just been so dry our rain deficit is just astronomical we are I don't know if they want to call it severe, near severe, extreme. It is D-R-Y. Um, I got out onto the river uh, the day before yesterday to just kind of scope out, see what it looks like. Um, and, yeah, she was really low. She was really low. Let's, since I don't have to use this as my camera, I can use it as my smart device. Um, let's talk apps. We can talk about apps real quick. Uh, common apps that I use uh, specifically for fishing and uh, fly fishing. Uh, I have this one called, I won't show it on this way because it just, uh, uh, doesn't really show up very well on the screen, but uh, it's called River Flows. And uh, it gives me a big old widget, and it takes me to, I have the Mississippi River at the St. Cloud Dam and the Sauk River near 
uh, St. Cloud. And it just gives me the uh, CFS, the cubic feet per second, which gives me, I don't know, more information than uh, nothing. And it also gives me a depth. I don't know exactly what and where that depth is. But right now we are at 2,250 CFS. Uh, yesterday morning it dropped down to, and it dropped and then it spiked back up up to 1000 CFS. Um, another app that I use quite frequently here in Minnesota we have uh, the through the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources uh, the Lake Finder app. It's designed for uh, web devices and you just bookmark these things. I can find all sorts of uh, boat launches, uh, public lakes, all the public access to all these different lakes, uh, whether a uh, uh, what do you got? got a kayak or canoe uh, access. Um, Another app that I use frequently is uh, I use a it's a fishing app. It's a fishing and hunting uh, it says S O dot dot dot. But anyways, it gives you the moon phases and what what I take notice is uh, the sunrise, sunsets, and um, you know that's a good 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 thing to know is exactly when is the sun going to be setting so tonight 907 uh, this morning sunrise was 526 with the zenith of uh, 117 p.m. The zenith uh, is directly above you so you have your x coordinates your y coordinates and your z your z is your zenith if you draw a straight line directly up uh, perpen or uh, at a 90 degree angle off the surface of the earth that's your zenith uh, and it gives you kind of major minor times as when to fish or when to you know expect you know this is based off of the moon phase and because it's based off of moon phases um, you know I really don't use this app so much to uh, determine if I'm gonna have a good day fishing uh, I use this one to blame uh, a bad day fishing. If I don't catch anything, I'll look on this and they'll say it was a poor day to go fishing. Well, the moon people did not lie. They were correct on that. Um, what's another? Here in Minnesota, we have the uh, cooperative uh, stream gauge. So that's uh, to find your uh, levels on the creeks and cricks. Weather apps, Google. Oh my gosh, Google, listen guys and gals, if you keep your phones on you while you're out in the water, have a lanyard, have a zinger on it, have, just so your smartphone doesn't get away from you. Um, but if you were to get a hold of my phone, you would get a hold of uh, all my secret uh, fishing spots because I drop pins on Google Maps where I have uh, a good time fishing. Um, I also put you know launches and landings that I want to go to and uh, really get in there on uh, Google Earth and really scout out lakes um, and you have to keep in mind on how how old or how dated the data is because uh, right now you look at a picture of the Mississippi River and there's water flowing through it but right now the entire East Channel is gone it's just bone dry almost um, and then wind, wind apps, got to check, see what the wind's coming from and keep up on your barometer and lightning strikes. Um, you know, these smart devices, uh, there's a lot of knowledge in them. And if you download the right apps, uh, great little tools and great cameras, except, uh, for whatever reason, the live stream just... Didn't go. We'll give it one last try. Start server. Oh, I know. I know, I know. I know. Turn off mobile data. That's what happened. It hiccuped. 
and we'll see let's see <laughs> we're back we're gonna finish this episode ladies and gentlemen um, yay the camera is back whoever said turn it off wait and come back uh, that's for the win we're gonna finish this we're gonna put the eyes on it and then we're gonna call it a night let's yay we gotta go back to here zoom back in and of course I can't see oh that's lined up aha all right we are back where did my zoom go All right, there we are. All right, are we there? We're here. We're all here because we're not all there. Whew. All right, so no kidding, there I was standing in line for a KISS concert. All right, let's go ahead and stick on our four little millimeter eyes. These are cool. These are little glow-in-the-dark eyes, glow eyes. And they got just enough stick to hold on to that thread until you goop it up with uh, some resin. Oh, careful, careful, careful. Don't drop it. If you drop it and you get bucktail trimmings and other junk on it, then, then it's just not going to be happy. I'm going to go just a little bit shorter on that. On that throat. Yeah. Okay, let's do our thick, not our thick, but our thin. Thin and like the super thin is uh is the bone dry. But what we're after here is we're just gonna try to kinda get in between the eyes, just a little drop, drop in between, fill in the gaps. There's a little little crack behind the eye as it kind of peels off, because the the eyes, the back of the eyes are flat, and as much as we squished that, the uh, thread head is not and we're getting flat pegs on a round hole kind of thing oh let's be careful oh so careful last time we goobered that up and where did I put that there we go Dabble, do you? All right, and while we're at it, we're going to add a little dab. We accidentally grabbed that back end with the vise, and that was a sad situation. Uh, 
All right. Last little bit of resin. We'll just goop this right on top. This is some bone dry. And now we're getting the thread. Well, I think it's a fly. I'll definitely fish. Got a little variety done tonight. We got, yeah, I think we did all right. Despite the technical difficulties, we persevered. We had to, whatever it was, it was, so the phone and the computer are connected via Wi-Fi. And because it's a phone, it wants to also connect to whatever signal it can. And usually, uh, when I before I start these live streams, I remember to turn off my mobile data. And it's just the phone is 100% dependent on Wi-Fi at that point. And it forces it to stay connected. It won't temporarily disconnect to 4G because it's a better, stronger signal than my Wi-Fi. Even though I have a Wi-Fi extender, I can touch it with my hand. But you guys tell me, we got the red and yellow. This is kind of an olive. Um, olive color, we've got our oh, those bits of crystal flash. So, yeah, let your imagination be your only limitation when it comes to tying little little streamers like this. But, you know, it's the for me it's the same kind of general theme, right? We got we got our body, an underwing, some bucktail and an overwing. And, you know, most minnows, most fish, yeah, they're kind of dark. Got that black line on top. Little red gillies. I think that'll work out just fine. But I think we're going to leave that at that. I'm not going to press my luck and try to crank one more out in the last 10 minutes. Quit while I'm ahead, as they say. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you have not already or not. Um, it doesn't matter to me. I do like the thumbs up. I do like seeing the likes. Uh, whether you subscribe or not, it's up to you whether you want to miss out. Um, that's entirely your call. Uh, but I'd recommend it. That way uh, you get a little... Uh, little thing on your YouTube account when we do our live streams. Hit that notification bell if I ever do a, a notification or a thing like that, then you guys will know that then there too. Um, but until then, or until next time, until then, I don't know, long day, I guess. That's what happens when we do a two-hour live stream. We do this each and every week, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we do this in honor and in support of the St. Cloud Fly Fishing Program. Uh, good stuff happening there. Um, can't wait to get back uh, physically involved face-to-face. -face. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you guys next week. Uh, be sure to join me Mondays, 9 a.m., about-ish. Kind of do our Tenkara style, Tenkara theme uh, feel live stream, morning coffee. Anywho, uh, have a good one. Thank you all for tuning in. Stay healthy out there, everybody. Please stay safe. Happy tying. Yeah, sure, you betcha. Tight lines. Peace. Thank you.